In the previous tutorial, we have learned how to bend a 3D text, how to project a text on any curved surface, and how to engrave or emboss a text to a plain surface. The links are in the video description. In this tutorial, we will learn how to engrave any text on a curved surface, like a cylinder. So, let us first delete this object to start from the scratch. Let us add a cylinder here. In order to make the surface of this cylinder smooth, go to the Modifiers tab, and first add an Edge Split modifier. Then apply this modifier. After that, add a Subdivision Surface modifier. Change the levels to 2, and also apply this. Now, we will add some text that we will later engrave, so go to the Add menu, and add a text object. In order to rotate this towards us, go to the Object Properties tab, change the X rotation to 90 degrees, and Y rotation to also 90 degrees. Let us move the object outside, so that we can see it clearly. This looks okay, but we can probably resize the cylinder a little bit. Maybe by just 1.2. Perfect. The position of the text is okay, we will fine-tune it later. But right now, we need to center align the text. So, go to the text tab, scroll down, all the way to this paragraph section and expand it. Under the alignment section, change the horizontal alignment to center, and the vertical alignment to also center. Now, in order to add our own words, instead of this default text, go to the edit mode. Then delete everything, and we will write, I love you. But if we want to use any symbol, like the love symbol, the default font in Blender called the B font will not work. We have to change the font here to some Unicode font supported by Blender, that has symbols. So scroll down, and you can select this font, it works perfectly with any symbol. Let us now complete the sentence, I love, then you. You can use different type of fonts and find out what is best for you. In this case, the font looks quite small. So, we will change the font size here to 1.5. And these two lines are quite apart from each other, so we have to also rectify the line spacing. Scroll down to this section and change the line spacing to 0.5. Now the text looks good, so go back to the object mode. We need to make two more changes for our text object. First, let us enable the wireframe view option in the object properties. We can see a lot of unnecessary vertices here, with a complex geometry, which will create many issues down the line. To simplify this geometry, just go to the Modifiers tab, and add a modifier called Decimate Modifier. Switch over to the Planar tab. The face count is now reduced to 6, and the topology also looks much simpler. The second change or improvement we need, is addition of some thickness to our text before we convert it into a mess. So, minimize this modifier and add another modifier, called Solidify Modifier, here. Use a suitable thickness value, we will go with 0.2 for this. That adds a nice thickness to our text object, and it looks good in this 3D form. We can now turn off the wireframe view mode, as its purpose is over. Now, we need to convert this text object into a mesh, so that we can cut its shape from the cylinder. They both have to be of mesh type, so go to the object menu, and select convert to, then mesh. And it is better to use the smooth shading option for them. So, first select our cylinder, and from the object menu, select the shade smooth option. And in this tab, please also enable the auto smooth option. Similarly, for the text object, go to the object menu and select shade smooth. You may see some deformation here. Just turn on the Auto Smooth option for this as well, and everything will now look good. Okay, let us move to the next step. We want to engrave this text to the cylinder, so we need to place it such that the text has a good amount of overlap with the cylinder. With the Move tool, first place it approximately, almost within the cylinder, like this. Just a small amount hanging outside. We can fine-tune this value in the Properties tab. We can change it to something like 1.2. This gives us a good overlap, and we can cut it from the cylinder. Maybe we can bring it little more outside, so we can go with the value of 1.22 instead. Perfect. Now, we need to bend the text similar to the curvature of the cylinder. And for that, we need to add an empty object. So from the Add menu, go to Empty, and here we can select any one empty, let us go for a cube. This cube should have the same transformation in the x-axis, 
as that of our text object. We see that the X location is 1.22, and the rotation is 90 degrees around the X axis, so select our empty object, and in the X location, enter the same value, 1.22, and 90 degrees in the X rotation field. Then select the text object, go to the modifiers tab, and add a simple deform modifier. Switch over to the bend tab, and for the origin, select the eyedropper, take it to the empty object and click on it to select it. Also, please change the bend axis to Y. Now, if you increase or decrease this bend angle, the text will bend as you wish. Let us view from this angle, and we will bend it slowly to match approximately with the cylinder. This looks fine. If this bending results into some artifacts, you can use a remesh modifier as shown in the previous tutorial. We don't need a perfect bend angle, just an approximate bend like this, is more than sufficient. Now select our cylinder, and in the modifiers tab, add a boolean modifier. Please ensure that the difference option is selected. Take the eyedropper from the object field and drop it on the text object. The engraving is done. Let us hide our text object to reveal the final output. We can see a nice cut into our cylinder, which looks cool. We are almost done, so you can now hide the empty that we had added. Now the last step is to create a light and material, whatever you want to set up for this scene. This tutorial is not for materials or lighting, so we have already created a material for the cylinder. Let us select that in the materials section. And we have added a mesh light inside this cylinder, so that the light comes out through the openings. If we turn on the rendered view mode, we can see the final effect on our cylinder object. You can experiment with this, using your own material and lighting. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.